It's May 5th, 2024, what we call Cinco de Mayo. Have you ever wondered what it was? If so, stay tuned and I'm going to let you know. Cheers, everybody. Today is Cinco de Mayo. And Cinco de Mayo is a very um, kind of holiday where we celebrate Mexican history and uh, Mexican culture. But unfortunately, it's celebrated in very few locations. And most people think that um, Cinco de Mayo is for uh, Mexican independence from the Spanish Empire. However, that's not what it is. So let's discuss what Cinco de Mayo actually is. In the early 1860s, now the U.S. in the 60s, um, 1860s is embroiled in the American Civil War. So they are not able to really get involved with any type of world affairs other than, um, you know, maybe some diplomatic things because there, we have problems of our own here. But in the early 1860s, Mexico was, uh, was facing significant financial difficulties. And President Benito Juarez declared a temporary uh, moratorium on foreign debt payments, meaning we owe you money, we can't pay it, we're not going to pay it. This action angered France, Britain, and Spain, who sent naval forces to Veracruz to demand repayment. While Britain and Spain negotiated with Mexico and withdrew their forces, France, led by Napoleon III, which is Napoleon, the famous Napoleon's nephew, saw an opportunity to establish a French empire in Mexico and refused to leave. They began advancing towards Mexico City. So on May 5th, 1862, a small, smaller, poorly equipped Mexican force led by General Ignacio Zaragoza, hopefully I get that right, and successfully defended the city of Puebla against um, a very much larger and better equipped French army. The victory at Puebla was a moral boost um, for uh, the entire country of Mexico, and symbolized resistance to foreign domination. Although the victory of Pueblo was significant, it didn't ultimately prevent the French from occupying Mexico. They returned the following year with a much larger force, eventually capturing Mexico City and establishing the short-lived Second Mexican Empire, and Maximilian I became the emperor, which was Napoleon III. Cinco de Mayo grew in significance in the United States, particularly among Mexican-American communities like here in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California, as a symbol of pride and unity. In the U.S., it's celebrated with parades, parties, traditional Mexican music, dance, and food that is not widely uh, observed as a national holiday in Mexico outside of Pueblo. In fact, a lot of American citizens um, know of Cinco de Mayo the same way they know of St. Patrick's Day. However, um, in Mexico, very few Mexican citizens really know of it or celebrate it. And it's the same thing with Ireland, not really a big St. Patrick's Day um, uh, celebration for them. They have many other uh, celebrations to uh, be a part of. Uh, mostly it was brought over by Irish Americans. So it's the same thing with Mexican Americans. <clears throat> so traditionally, people like to go out and have tacos and uh, uh, Mexican food and do some dances and, and you know, just have a great time. And tequila becomes very popular at that time. And there are various levels of tequila, just like there are for any other spirit, especially like whiskey. There's different kinds there. So there you have um, uh, a distilled spirit that is branched out into multiple different variations, tequila being one of them. So the process of distilling agave, which is a very potent spirit, evol uh, spirit evolved over the centuries in Mexico. Initially, in crude distillation techniques were used, resulting in a harsh spirit called mezcal wine. So it, it, mezcal is more of a earthy um, bodied traditional way of making uh, what would become tequila. Over time, techniques improved and the spirit became smoother and more refined. So tequila is produced primarily in the Jalisco region of Mexico, especially in and around the town of Tequila and the surrounding highlands. The unique climate, soil, and altitude of this region contributes to the distinctive flavor profile of tequila. Um, the specific origin of tequila as we know it today is often traced back to the 16th century, so it's around the 1500s, 
Um, that's almost the same time that um, we start seeing the distillation of uh, whiskeys in Europe. Uh, it began distilling agave in the Jalisco re region for the Spanish. The first official distillery for tequila, known as the Jose Cuervo Distillery, was established in 1758, making it one of the oldest tequila producers in the world. Tequila production evolved over the centuries with the introduction of more modern distillation techniques and government regulations to ensure uh, quality and authenticity. In 1974, the Mexican government established the denomination of origin of tequila, designating specific regions, and originally there were five, I believe there are nine regions in Mexico, uh, states, that could be produced and settling strict standards for that production. Tequila's popularity grew, popularity grew both domestically and internationally, becoming a symbol of Mexican culture. So if you go to any type of uh, Mexican restaurant today, or even South of, uh, uh, Latin American restaurants, you will find uh, a tequila uh, list. Uh, it's enjoyed in various forms, including Blanco, which is a silver, uh, Reposado, which is arrested, Anejo, which is aged, and Extra Anejo, which is extra aged, each with its own unique characteristics. So the silver comes straight off the still. The rested could be in there for a day. It could be in there for a little bit longer. It just depends, but it's got to touch that wood in the barrel. Um, and then Anejo is going to be aged, and it's going to have a very specific age time. And then extra uh, Nejo is even aged longer. Today, tequila is not only a beloved spirit, but also a significant economic driver for Mexico with its production export continuing to the countries, uh, uh, contributing to that country's uh, economic uh, vitality and cultural identity. Some people may not know this, but nobody in the world can label a spirit tequila except for Mexico. It can only come from Mexico. So any spirits bought in the United States from a local um, craft distillery um, cannot use the word tequila. They can use agave spirit or they can use imported tequila, aged, whatever. Um, but they must label that it is uh, distilled in Mexico. And that is very similar to what we have in America with bourbon. Only bourbon can be produced in America. Nothing else outside the world can label it as bourbon, um, but they can say on the bottle that it's bourbon. Um, you know, in, I don't know, say England, you can buy a bourbon that is a weird name. You never heard of it, and it's from a bottling company in uh, England, but it must say distilled in the United States, Kentucky, Tennessee, Texas, wherever. A little known. Uh, misnomer is today tequila um, is um, grown or is legally allowed and I think not allowed allowed to be called tequila distilled as tequila in about uh, 11 uh, region states of Mexico where um, it's still very common to hear people say no it's only five and that is because um, the expansion has grown so much Tequila becomes very popular in the United States in the 1980s when um, we have various songs and uh, uh, kind of uh, TV shows and stuff like that promoting that kind of uh, drinking culture. So you ask, is that all they produce? No, they do produce mezcal, which is an older thing. Um, they, they produce uh, a couple different um, agave spirits that other regions will do. There's also some different spirits that they create out of different um, kind of families of the agave plant. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to um, kind of not lump them all together as an agave spirit, but there's plenty out there, or there are some out there. Um, tequila is very um, prominent here in my household. We have quite a bit. Um, we have probably something most of you have seen, the Casamigos tequila, which is, we have the silver, and I believe we have um, the Anejo. Uh, we weren't much of a tequila fan until we went to Mexico and did a tequila um, tasting class and learned a lot about tequila and learned that everybody drinks it wrong. 
Um, of course, the Jose Cuervo Traditional, um, absolutely amazing. Um, the Ariete is a new pickup I just got um, from a single barrel club I'm involved with. And this is an artisanal uh, Reposado tequila. And so you have um, a traditional and artisanal. A traditional is going to be much more in tune with the flavor you are accustomed to. Um, that is probably really done the old ways, but also truly mass produced. Or artisanal is more what we would call in America the craft distiller, who is trying to break boundaries or come outside of the box, or they're just kind of. Um, much more into the art of the distillation rather than the uh, mass production of it. Of course, everybody knows Patron. I personally am not a huge Patron fan, but um, I do love their bottles, so I like those. Um, my favorite is probably a regional artisanal um, uh, tequila. Uh, you just go to any small town and there's going to be a tequila uh, distillery somewhere that's producing their own brand. And we got this in the Yucatan. And this is Mexiquino, and it is um, just absolutely amazing. I am a huge fan of, oh, well, here's another uh, kind of uh, artisanal. This is the Anejo uh, Concesia de Elmason. Um, I prefer the Anejos um, or the Reposados. I'm not a real big Blanco fan. I want a little bit of um, woodiness and flavor from uh, that aging involved with it. <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of mezcal. Mezcal is just amazing. Um, absolutely love that earthy darkness. It reminds me of light, a lot like um, kind of the islas and scotch, that kind of smoky, um, earthy harshness. It's just, I really do like it. I found many I don't like, but I do care for it. So illegal is probably one of my favorites. And of course, when having um, your uh, tequila, if you're doing shots, you, you need to learn how to do it right, not the American style of just pouring it down, taking a lime and some salt. Um, it's actually done quite opposite. And it's not necessarily with limes or lemons. It's um, with oranges. And it's done in a whole different manner. And the way you inhale it is just an art form. And maybe we'll have a whole um, episode on how to do that. But it's not very um, authentic if you don't get some gusano. Gusano is a bug, a worm that lives in the agave plant. And when they're processing it, they'll take those worms out and they'll dry them and dice them up into a spice. Um, and that's what you ram your uh, shot glass with or your um, uh, margarita glass, where margarita is not necessarily a uh, Mexican invention, it's an American invention, but it's still <clears throat> always rimmed with salt or sugar. Um, but try some gusano. You should be able to find it or order it at most stores. You drink most tequilas out of a shot glass. Um, and of course, just savor it sometimes. Drink it like a whiskey sometimes. You will smell the difference, taste the difference, roll it around in your mouth, feel the different flavors and the different notes and tannins that you get, and your world will open up and you will be, appreciate tequila much more as a um, cocktail uh, flavor infuser. I like to have mezcal out of a traditional rosary cup. There's my little cross underneath. I can't, don't know if you can see that, but um, this is traditional. So when you're having mezcal in the traditional way and you're finished, there's the cross um, and it's kind of like a blessing. But some of you might say, oh, you're not tequila fans. What about whiskey? Well, Mexican whiskey is a little bit um, different. Uh, while Mexico is renowned for its tequila and mezcal production, the whiskey industry in Mexico is relatively young. Usually if you go to um, a resort there or something, you're going to find uh, that they don't really serve a lot of Mexican whiskey. Whiskey, they're going to serve a lot of American or European whiskey, names you've never even heard of, Canadian whiskey as well. Um, they'll have some that you recognize, Jack Daniels or Jim Bean, but usually they're going to be brands you've never, ever heard of. 
Um, but in recent years, uh, there have been growing interest in whiskey production, with a handful of distilleries beginning to produce American whiskey. Mexican whiskey producers have been experimenting with different grains, aging techniques, flavor profiles to create unique expressions that reflect the country's uh, terroir and cultural influence. Several craft distilleries have um, sprouted in Mexico, have ventured into whiskey production alongside their own spirits, and these distilleries often focus on small batch production and handcrafted techniques to produce high quality whiskey. So they're starting off with tequila, and then they start toying with um, some whiskeys, and they're doing a good job. While Mexican whiskey may still be in its early stages, it has the potential to make an impact on the global whiskey market. And already you can get, I think, a couple different whiskeys here in the United States. Um, I cannot remember one of them, but this one I have. Uh, Mexico's rich tradition of spirits production and its diverse culinary landscapes provide this as a fertile ground for innovation and creativity in whiskey making. I know that when we went down there, I just wanted some good whiskey and I enjoyed tasting the imported whiskey that they had because it was unique. But um, I, I just wanted some good Mexican whiskey. And most people laughed at me like Mexico doesn't make whiskey, which is a story I hear in almost every country I go to that that country doesn't make whiskey. Some emerging whiskey uh, brands, though, um, <clears throat> are quite notable. And like I say, two are coming are here in the United States that I know of. But this is Absolo, uh, Abasolo whiskey, which is known for its use of Mexican ancestral uh, corn and varieties of its whiskey production. So it's using not an American corn or American um, grain. It's using ancestral corn that is used um, in some other distillations and food products in Mexico. Um, there's also a thing called Mexa Whiskey, a brand that aims to blend Mexican and American whiskey making traditions. I myself have not seen that. I would love to um, find a bottle and test it out. So if you've seen it, you can leave those comments below. But it is worth noting that Mexican whiskey industry is still so young and compared to most established whiskey producing regions like Scotland, Ireland, the United States. However, with increasing interest and investment in whiskey production, Mexico is ripe. It could become a notable player in the whiskey uh, global market really quickly. Um, they're one gold medal platinum winner entry could just explode that market. So be on the uh, lookout for it. And always ask your, um, your liquor store owner what whiskeys you can get from other countries. Um, because there are some notable whiskeys out there from like Israel and um, Czechoslovakia, uh, Austria, uh, Germany that are absolutely amazing that people don't think have uh, whiskeys. And so ask your local um, retailer if they can get some Mexican whiskey. Um, Abasolo is actually delightful. It's very um, light in color. So it's not aged very long. We reviewed this um, quite a while back. It looks like in uh, Cinco de Mayo of 21. So three years ago, maybe. Maybe two years. Maybe that's a two. Um, and we gave it a, a very good uh, rating. But you see that nice golden color being aged in Mexico, the same kind of heat that we have down here. I'm assuming that it was only in the barrel for um, not very long. Ooh, very sweet, earthy. Almost got some wheat tones to it, some doughy tones. Definitely different. Ooh, a little smokiness to it. So, um, yeah, that is interesting. Forgot how interesting this was. It's actually not as bad as somebody would think with, you know, saying Mexican whiskey. But so that's the history of Cinco de Mayo. Make sure that you celebrate that culture. But remember, it's not Mexican Independence Day. That's a very common mistake. Um, it is a, an American holiday for Mexico find things weird in America. But um, tell us your favorite Cinco de Mayo story, your favorite tequila, 
um, and tequila experience, as long as it's not gross, in the comments below. I'd also like to hear a shout out from all of you um, mezcal fans out there. Most people don't like mezcal. I think it is absolutely amazing. Um, there's a lot of um, myth and misinformation about mezcal, about um, you know using the wormwood and um, being a hallucinogen and being banned and stuff. And a lot of that is just plain urban legend, uh, whatnot. I'm all uh, pretty much all mezcal that I know of uses the wormwood. So. Um, they just don't include the worm in the bottle. That was a advertising gimmick. But tell us about that. And tell us if you've tried a Mexican whiskey, what you thought of it, especially if it's Abasolo. Um, any other ones I should know about, I will always be on the lookout. In fact, I will be in Mexico and Colombia in the fall um, and possibly have an opportunity in Panama as we're going through the canal to maybe look at some stuff. But I would be super interested in those uh, areas. If you could, oh, Costa Rica too. Um, we're taking a cruise through the canal. So please let us know if you have any suggestions for whiskey in those regions, but also focus on some Mexican uh, whiskey. All right, happy Cinco de Mayo. Go have some great food, great drinks, um, and we will see you tomorrow. Cheers. Mm -hmm.